Have you ever been labeled bipolar, schizophrenic, depressed, ADD, have high anxiety? Once upon a time, I too struggled with these. And I'm here to tell you there is hope. There is a way to transform your life. My name is Gordy Bufton. 10 years ago, I had the opportunity of attending the Alternative to Med Center. I've been labeled bipolar, schizophrenic, gone in and out of four different psych wards, dropped out of college because of an addiction, smoked pot every single day for three years. Going to the Alternative to Med Center is hands down one of the best things that I have ever done. I'm gonna share a little bit about my story to give you hope, hope of what is possible. Hope that when you take proper action, you can create a life of your dreams. A life that doctors told me I would never have. They said I would always have to take some kind of prescription medication every single day. Well, they were wrong, and I'm so grateful they are, because it has now been over a decade since the last time I took any form of medication. People talk about having a perfect childhood. I think I actually had a perfect childhood. My mom was a stay-at-home mom. My dad had a very good job in the banking business. I was born in Canada, very loving and supporting family. At the age of eight, my parents had the opportunity to move to the United States, and we moved to Atlanta, Georgia. But part of moving to the States meant I was now a foreigner, and I started to get bullied in school for my accent and saying A, and I always felt different than the other kids. But at home, life was really good. There was so much love. My dad coached my hockey team. He coached baseball. I made straight A's in school, and it came very easy. Fast forward a few years. Now I'm 16, 17 years old, and I have everything that I've worked so hard for. I'm looking to go play collegiate golf. And then my parents come to me one afternoon, and they go, Gordy, we're going to move to Florida. And in that moment, my life just crumbled. I was heartbroken. I didn't have the life skills that I have now to deal with that pain and emotion. And when I was hanging out with my friends in Georgia, one of my friends offered me pot. And that first time that I smoked, it was like, oh my gosh, this allows me to forget about my pain, forget about my problems, and feel normal again. I start smoking every single day, I start dealing, and I forget about my dreams and forget about my aspirations and just start using every single day. It's a Friday night, my best friend's over at my house, we're smoking pot, and he goes, Gordy, have you ever tried ecstasy? I go, no, I've never tried it, I've heard of it. He said, would you like to try it? I said, sure. I didn't think about the side effects, I didn't think about how it could derail my dreams, and I tried ecstasy that Friday night. Little did I know how destructive it would be in so many areas of my life. And I stopped going to class completely and I started using XC three, four, or five days a week and not caring about my future. The part about this, which was so difficult, is I had been a straight A student. And now, living with my parents, I was brain dead. If I could go back now, I wouldn't try XC for that first time because it has been years and years and years rebuilding my life from that one decision. And the worst part is I had done this to myself. Nobody had forced me to take XC, but nobody told me the real side effects of these substances. I couldn't think, I couldn't function. Words that came easy to spell and define became so much more difficult. This snowballed into the next few years using drugs and ultimately landed me in a psych ward at the age of 20. Am I really in jail? Am I spending my 20th birthday in jail? Yes, I am. And the short answer for why, it's because I'm a drug addict. Gordy is my eldest now, of three. He is my only son and who was this kid that was just an amazing young man. You could never have told me out of my three kids he was the one to go down that dark night of the soul. He ended up having a psychotic break. He ended up staying in this mental ward for three or four days and then got transferred to a mental institution that he stayed at for 10 days. And I go into the psych ward 
and I'm given all this medication, and I'm given three meals a day, and I'm locked in a box. Anyone in this situation would go crazy. They're labeling me bipolar, schizophrenic, manic depressed. My anxiety starts to rise. I'm locked in a box. So I've now been in a psych ward for two weeks on a three day hold. The girl that I was dating causes ruckus and finally I get released. And he came back home from this experience. We had not seen him for about a week or two. He looked almost anorexic. He, uh, it was just hellacious to see how this young vibrant boy was looking at that time. I wasn't taking the medication for the next two weeks. I'm doing good things. I'm dating this girl, I'm being smart, I'm not smoking pot. And then the thought comes into my head, man, I'd really like to smoke some pot. And guess what? The next thing I know, I'm waking up in another psych ward. Two weeks later, he ended up having another psychotic break. I totally lost connection with reality. Gordy had destroyed his bedroom. He had smashed all his trophies. He was lying naked in his closet. And it was quite a scary experience for me to walk in and see what this young man had done to himself and to his bedroom. I had no choice but to call the police. So he was taken away to a mental ward in Naples, Florida. And I am not willing to lose another two weeks of my life. The psych ward was on the seventh floor of this hospital, and I remember running down those stairs, not even touching one, one stair, just jumping from flight to flight with a nurse quickly chasing behind me. And I ran out those doors and I almost ran into the glass because the motion detectors weren't moving quick enough. And I took my hospital gown and I throw off my hospital gown and I'm running as fast as I can. So I'm climbing through backyards, I'm jumping through fences, I'm climbing trees, I'm doing anything that I can, just running as fast as I can. I had no idea when I escaped they would have two helicopters and six police dogs looking for me. And they put me in the back of this cop car. And that is the last thing I remember. The next thing I remember is waking up strapped to this hospital bed. They thought I was completely crazy. This was the guy who escaped a psych ward. As a news story ran, they said, naked man escapes a psych ward. They labeled me bipolar, schizophrenic, manic depressed, gave me all kinds of antipsychotic medication and called me crazy. After four psych ward stays and almost three months locked in psych wards, I agreed to go to a treatment center. Finally, after four experiences, he came and said, I'm ready for some help. And I remember this guy, Lyle, coming one day and he said, I'm gonna get you out of the psych ward. I'm gonna take you to a program and I'm gonna transform your life. And so I get down to the psych ward and ask them, you know, what medications have you had him on? They had him on like six milligrams of Ativan, which is a lot. And he was still running around and being a bit obtuse. And he looks at me and he goes, Gordy, do you ever wanna go back to a psych ward? At that moment, I had a decision to make. Do I wanna go back to a psych ward, do I not? I said, no, I never wanna to go to a back to a psych ward. And he looked at me straight in the eyes and he said, well, quit acting like you're crazy. What was curious is that he actually, pretty much in that moment, did it. There was a switch that got flipped where he's like, yes, okay, I actually want to do something different here. I spent the next three months at Alternative to Med Center, where they focused on my diet. They focused on supplements, on rebuilding my brain, on fixing my neurotransmitters. Any other mental health institution at the time would have most certainly continued to drug Gordy. What we did instead is we took this overly medicated and misunderstood individual and cleaned up their diet, blood sugar swings and food allergies and things that are just really basic common sense get highly overlooked. At Alternative to Med Center, they focused on my neurochemistry and balancing out my brain. One of the axioms that we use here is to use orthomolecular medicine. And what orthomolecular means is to use non-drugging, naturally occurring substances to treat mental health. We did a sauna detox to flush out all the toxins, and I graduated the program in May of 2009. All I say is I'm incredibly grateful that I got my son back, that he is has gone through a massive amount of healing. 
He's changing other lives and I attribute it all the way back to Alternative to Med Center. And I have had the pleasure of speaking all around the world over the last few years and have written two books, Eluding Reality, which is all about my craziness into psych wards and addiction, and The Connection Effect, which is how I have transformed my life from somebody who psychiatrists were saying would never live a day not on prescription medication to a happy, healthy, wealthy life, traveling all around the world and getting to impact the lives of others. And this is what can happen when you focus on your mental well-being. You have counselors, you have mentors, you have people that you can call on that you trust. This was something I didn't have when I was going in and out of these psych wards. I wish I had. I wish I knew there was a different alternative. I'm here to tell you there is. Whatever your label has been, whether it's anxiety, whether it's depression, whether it's ADD, whether it's bipolar, whether it's schizophrenic, whether it's OCD, the right focused treatment and work, you can transform it. It might take months, it might take years, it might take weeks, it might take days, but this is a journey that we must go on and we must continue to go on until our last breath, it never stops. Every single day, I spend two to three hours working on my mental well-being. That looks like meditation, that looks like exercise, that looks like the foods that I eat, the books that I read, the people that I talk to, the people that I mentor, my mentors. But it's focusing on that every single day. 